Why do you think it is that you're trailing Trump in all these swing state polls? Because you don't read the polls out from Gibbler and it's ten polls. Eight of them, I'm beating them in those states. Eight of them. You guys only do two. CNN and New York Times. Check it out. Check it out. We'll get you a copy of all those that poll. Okay? You don't believe you're trailing in battleground states? No, I don't. We begin this hour with the latest on the race for the White House. President Biden sounding confident when he comes to his reelection hopes, when it comes to his hopes. I, uh, that's despite new polling that puts him behind former President Trump in a rematch. So Peter Ducey is live at the White House with more. What is the president saying right now? Uh, oh, well, what did he say? <laughs> Well, it's been interesting the last couple of weeks because President Biden does not talk a ton about Trump. But now that we are within a year of the general election day, uh, we're getting this from a closed door fundraiser. Since I took on Trump, we haven't stopped winning and he hasn't stopped losing. But there are some prominent liberals who are not so sure. The Biden-Harris coalition could be called the, the Humpty Dumpty coalition right now, uh, just falling apart. <clears throat> just falling apart, the the Latino vote on the ground, the youth vote on the ground, the black vote on the ground. This is this is not good. The Biden campaign's pushback reads like this. Despite the hair on fire, sky is falling tone. We've seen from media coverage over the last few days, political predictions more than a year out tend to look a little different a year later. Joe Biden has been counted out time and again and proved pollsters and pundits wrong. The problem, though, is laid out in these New York Times polls. You look at Nevada, Trump's up 10. Georgia, Trump by six. Arizona, Trump by five. Michigan, Trump by five. Pennsylvania, Trump by four. The New York Times columnist Charles Blow is writing, it is ridiculous to ask people to ignore the erosion of Biden's support among demographic groups that he must secure to win re-election. I sense a growing dissatisfaction with Biden, particularly among young minorities, and the war in Gaza is only making it worse. So I had a chance to ask President Biden about these terrible poll numbers. Why do you think it is that you're trailing Trump in all these swing state polls? Because you don't read the polls out from Gibbler and it's ten polls. Eight of them, I'm beating them in those states. Eight of them. You guys only do two. CNN and New York Times. Check it out. Check it out. We'll get you a copy of all those that polls. You don't believe you're trailing in battleground states? No, I don't. And true to his word, the president, about two hours later through his team, got me a copy of those polls. Uh, They were all national polls, though, and four of them that show him either leading or tied with Trump are three-way polls that give Biden the lead when RFK Jr. is also on the ballot, which may wind up being the big story here uh, as the general election gets closer. Back to you. So were you surprised he spoke to you? He came right over to you, number one. And number two, he almost expected the question. And I hear those polls weren't exactly the standard that Fox usually goes by where we could use them on the air. Those other ones. Yeah. Yeah, so our our polling uh, unit, uh, led by Dana Blanton, they have very specific standards for the polls that we can use. Um, Just the way that they are conducted, uh, who uh, is polled, how many people they survey. And so four of the polls that the president's team got to us are not up to the Fox standards. They're just kind of things you see them online, social media. Um, not up to the Fox standards, but they they do speak to the trend. And I, I'm not surprised that the president came over uh, because he knows that he's got to talk about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. When we ask about it at the press briefing room, they say that they can't tell us anything political or about an election because of the Hatch Act. Uh, they don't want to talk about Donald Trump's legal problems. But at some point, uh, we're within a year of the election. They've got to talk about Donald Trump if he's going to be the Republican nominee. Well, Pete- uh, and so I, 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 it's great that he came over. He seemed like he was in great spirits. Mm-hmm. Um, and we hope there's more where that came from because there will be more polls. Well, Peter, he's not just going to have to deal with Cornell West uh, and RFK, but now he has to deal with Jill Stein with the Green Party as well, mm-hmm. which is going to take votes from him. Any reaction to that from the White House? Well, the, the polls that they showed uh, are basically showing that they are – that those third party candidates are also drawing support from Donald Trump. And so I I think the folks here would say that it's just too soon to tell. 